beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Simroll, and welcome to the Complete Guide to Master Serum. Now, in today's episode, guys, we're going to give you guys more experience because remember, like I said, being a know-it-all, aka knowing what the synth does in general, like you know what each knob does, doesn't mean you're a good sound designer. We have enough of that on YouTube. Everyone thinks they know what they're talking about because everyone's studying up music production, but the key thing is the experience, guys. So today, we're going to do another recreation to start things off, and then we'll do different variations to a lead. Now, when it comes to leads, guys, uh, the more simple, the better. As long as you know what you're going for, that's the best thing. I know there's a lot of FL Studio Remix out there. Um, tutorials where they layer like five, ten leads together and it sounds great. But the problem with that is that if you hear the lead more, you start to hear it sounds kind of like, it sounds good, but it feels like there's extra baggage there. And the problem with that is that a lot of people are laying the same damn saw lead over and over again to get a, a bigger sound. But if you know how to process, if you know how to make these leads from scratch, if you know what you're doing... You can create one good preset patch that you can use for a song, and that's it. You don't need five layers unless you're looking to add, like, a stereo layer to a mono layer and stuff like that. And, yeah, um, five could be max for me, but I usually tell my students no more than five because then you're just you're just fishing for gold at that point. So uh, um, what we're going to do here is do a recreation of this song. So we're first going to create the first part of the lead, which comes in here. And, by the way, this is one of my favorite songs. If you guys want to hear it out, just look it up, and then you can watch this tutorial so you can hear the recreation. But this is how it sounds like here. So that's the first one we're creating, and then we're going to create the drop lead, which sounds like this. Okay, I don't want to get copyrighted, so I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? So I have here a MIDI recreation of it, not the greatest, but you know, whatever. Um, it sounds like this. Um, so we're, let's lower this down. Now the notes aren't overlapping and you don't need to have them overlap for what we're about to do. But the first thing that, let's say you wanna create a sound like that, you have that sound in your head. What is the first thing you need? You wanna have that down, 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 down. Like it's kinda of gliding, but it's not gliding in the traditional mono legato way. Well, that's when we would use mono legato with always on. Now the MIDI notes aren't overlapping, so we're not gonna get the effect. But if you have always on and you put a bit of portamento, you can give it that lazy vibe. If I take it off, you kind of lose the swag that it has. So that's the first thing. And that's as simple as that is. I do get questions from people asking how to do that because a lot of people don't know how to put that on. Once we have that, it's time to shape the sound. Now, the sound doesn't sound like a full-out sustained lead. In fact, it sounds more like a decayed lead. But you're going like, well, Sam, that sounds more like a fucking plug. But that's the key. Here, we're going to maybe lower the sustain. To and then we're going to add a release. And look at what that does. Now we just got to control that because we're adding a tail to the sound. Remember what's happening, we talked about this in the envelope section, is that if we let go before the decay time is over, the release will activate where that decay time is. So, so sometimes it's very important to get those decay and release values just right. Now keep in mind, if I have the model legato off, these notes will overlap and it sounds cool. It gives a cool effect. It's, it sounds very like, kind of like scary movie, mystical, um, Stranger Things kind of vibe. That's how you create that. Mono legato it again. We're gonna put a filter on it. Now we're going to distort it. Notice that when I distort, I get this nasty frequency. That's just the lows that we don't need. So I'm going to use an EQ. Get rid of that. Okay. Let's mess with the Q maybe a bit. Maybe more harsh here. We're going to put reverb. Here, what I want is control the reverb. If you want a reverb with a lot of highs, lower the highs. If you want a reverb with a uh, more damp, like more like mellow, more um, closed, then high cut. 
It's like finding a balance. Here, the spin in spin that you guys know, it's like a chorus effect, which creates this kind of... And there we go. Now, last thing I could do is maybe add a layer to this where it's an octave higher and mix it in. I want it so that it adds more frequency response in the higher end, but it doesn't, you, you can barely tell it's there. So it's adding more harmonics to it in an upper octave range. So it's not the same ones, but it's done in a way where you can barely tell it's there, but it adds so much. That's the new way to do it. We don't want that. We want it just a bit. We're pretty much done with that sound. I'm gonna mono, uh, put the iron phase down on that. Remember, it makes it so that the saw stays composed. Maybe a bit too much reverb, but that's gonna be it there. Now, the one in the drop lead, it's funny because there's some recreations out there that I kind of don't agree with, but um, it's just a, another saw, an octave up, uh, and it's detuned. And you guys know how to do that. We've talked about this in the series again. But once I do that, Notice how that distortion gives a lot. Here, maybe I would reduce a bit on the highs, just a tiny bit. So that's how we recreate that sound. And as you guys saw, I mean, it, it, I understand, you know, there is a bit of advanced stuff here. I mean, it's not complicated, but for a person to think to do it that way, it, it just requires you making presets and just knowing what works and what doesn't. Let's assume I want to create more of a mono driven lead to, uh, you know, mono driven leads are always going to sound better in mono. <laughs> Usually uh, aggressive wide leads, they don't sound that great, guys. And the reason for this is because when you detune a sound and you make it wide, and you distort the shit out of that, like with a diode, it doesn't really sound that clean. However, if we have it in the center, it sounds a lot better, which is what we're going to do. We're going to put mono legato always on. Here, the distortion squaring it out, so I'm going to use a two. And then I'm going to distort it like so. Now, as you guys know, filter and distortion give some good results. So we can do maybe like, fuck that. We can go pre here. Uh, we know how to use that. And we can kind of band pass it a bit or have a high pass band pass. There we go. Okay, we can add an envelope to this to make it more interesting. Just pitch back effect on Lord Decay. Same effect, we're going to lower the <laughs> reverb. Okay, again, we're using a soft for this. Um, here, maybe we can add like an OTT. Just be careful with it. Makes it sound a bit thinner, so I'm going to add some mids back in. Maybe the high is a little low. Gain stage it up. Lower size on the reverb just a bit where you can barely tell it's there. There we go. And that sounds good. You can use it in any... Don't be scared to go lower octaves too with some of the leads because in order to get that vibe like the Oro's new song with I forgot Danny Avila has this sort of weird sounding um, sort of like <laughs> like something like that G House I don't know what it is but that's essentially what he's doing um, you can go lower with this but if you use it high 
jungle terror lead now. So you can do a lot, you know, it's just the way you use it as well. Um, here we can maybe add a layer of, that's why. Let's put that envelope thing on it as well here. Pull it back. Uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff. Let's say you want to turn this into a Don Diablo lead. Um, here, I would do is lower the levels down. Uh, use an LFO like this so you can get the tack right on them. And then we're going to envelope it. Just get it a little bit more like sand. Let's add the filter now with the low pass, which creates that effect for us here. Um, we're going to do that. You know, it's starting to get that vibe, and then you can mess around with other stuff. Maybe this. It's more of a future house lead in, in, in all honesty than anything, but... You know, um, pretty cool lead, uh, kind of like Sonderling and, and cool stuff like that. Um... You know, the thing with this too, guys, is that we can create with a saw, like, brassy style kind of sound. If we kind of put our minds to it, like, honestly, we have this. We can get, like, a tuba here. a tuba. And then just have it more. And then a lot of reverb. Uh, some detunement. Some chorus. You can get rid of the distortion if you want. Uh, you can have that. know that song uh, uh maybe not so much here on that but just a bit but in essence guys that is kind of like the lead creation i mean we just utilize the saw but the thing is is that you can always program lisa sound good with sauce and then switch them around try and find other wave tables do a bit of fm like we've done before which you guys know ex exists inside of serum uh to create cool leads but with this episode i just wanted to show you guys that sometimes the more complicated routes aren't the greatest and if you're just looking for something simple that sounds good you can never go wrong with a proper saw proper shaping and as well as knowing what you're doing with it but anyways guys you guys take care and i'll see you guys next time for another serum um complete guide to master serum and peace out i hope you guys enjoyed the recreation i hope you guys enjoyed the leads and get to work guys peace out <laughs>